one thing that this lesson discusses is what numbers raised to the zero power give us. And I'm going to do kind of an informal proof here and start out with 3 to the first power. I know that 3 to the first power just means 3. And if I want to do 3 to the second power, that means 3 times 3, which is 9. And 3 to the third power is 3 times 3 times 3. And 3 times 3 is 9. And then we multiply by 3 one more time, and we'll get 27. And then after that, we're going to multiply 27 times 3. And we'll get 81. Now what I want you to notice is that each subsequent 3 we add on, when we go from left to right, we're just multiplying by 3. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. And the opposite direction, if I want to go this way, I can simply divide by 3. 81 divided by 3 is 27. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then I can fill in this blank here because 3 divided by 3 is 1. And this will work for any number. When you end up, no matter what the base is, when you end up dividing the first power by itself, you're 3 to the first power is just itself, and then when you divide it by itself, it's always going to equal 1. So no matter what, what base you have, if it's raised to the 0 power, it is always 1. So let me show you a couple examples here. I'll write one similar to what the homework says. If I have 3 to the 10th over 3 to the 10th, and I multiply it by 6 to the 0 power, Let's figure out what that is. Now, using some of the laws we've already learned, 3 to the 10th divided by 3 to the 10th is simply 1. Because I can rewrite this part as 3 to the 10 minus 10, or 3 to the 0 power, and it equals 1. And we can even see that just based on the expression itself. 3 to the 10th over 3 to the 10th is a number over a number. Even if we don't know what 3 to the 10th is, it's going to be the same number over the same number. And whenever we have the same number in the numerator and the denominator, we can reduce it to 1. And then we're going to use the fact that we learned today, anything to the 0 power is 1. So 6 to the 0 power is also 1. And 1 times 1 gives us 1. Now, another thing that the second question tells us is that we need to show that if I take any number raised to the zero plus any number raised to the zero, it doesn't even have to be the same one, let's make it be, and I multiply it by a number raised to the zero power, that I'm going to get the same answer as if I take a to the 0 plus b to the 0 and multiply it by b to the 0 power. These two expressions are equivalent. So basically on the inside, I have a plus b. And then I'm taking it and I'm multiplying it by a to the 0 power in the first case and b to the 0 power in the second case. And I know that this is equal to 1, and I know that this is equal to 1. So therefore, if I'm going to take a to the 0 plus b to the 0, which in this case is equal to 2, because anything to the 0 power is 1, so I'm going to show that 2 times 1 is going to be 2. And in both cases, the entire expression will be equal to 2. And if they both equal the same answer, the expressions are equivalent.